mitä tarvitaan herkulliseen länsirannikon salattiin? Runsaasti maantietä. Noin kolmehyppysellistä hiekkarantaa. Rantakalliota maun mukaan. Kourallinen kokemus. Rannikko ihmisiä mielellään kokonaisina. Sitten yön ääniä esimerkiksi luontoa tai mitä nyt sattuu korviin tulemaan. Huolella käsin poimittuja ensimmäisen luokan artisteja. Ja annetaan muhia seitsemän yötä tuuli mer- merivesi marinaissa. Mm. Ja koristellaan paikallisilla paljastuksella. Ja loppujen lopuksi ravistellaan. Maistuisi varmaan sullekin. Kylmäkköinä Taina Vest. Ilpo Jaakola. Minna Jaakkola. Hundreds of troops from the UN Rapid Reaction Force have taken a position on Mount Igman overlooking Sarajevo with orders to fire on any Serbs attacking UN peacekeepers. 500 French foreign legionnaires and 320 British troops arrived late on Monday afternoon. Their task to safeguard the last road into the Bosnian capital, which often comes under fire by Bosnian Serbs. Armed with 12 tanks, heavy mortar and 105mm guns controlled by computer, They've been told to retaliate against Serb offensives with heavier fire. Local people watched bemused as engineers prepared gun emplacements. The rapid reaction force is setting up around Sarajevo for the first time. The deployment comes after two French UN soldiers were killed at the weekend in Serb fire. Talks between top NATO officials over just how to protect the Bosnian enclave of Garajda have been adjourned to allow for overnight consultation with national governments. The meeting in Brussels by military planners is an attempt to figure out how to translate into action the warnings from a crisis meeting in London last week, threatening massive air attacks against the Bosnian Serbs if they attacked Karajda. With talks set to resume on Tuesday, military advisers are also looking at plans to defend Bihać and Jeppe. Murder, rape, barbarous acts of violence. The words of the UN's human rights envoy as he describes the treatment of Srebrenica's inhabitants by the conquering Bosnian Serbs. A statement that also served as a warning to stop a repetition of the tragedy happening in Jeppe, another eastern Muslim enclave surrounded by the Serbs. This amateur video was taken at the height of the battle for the so-called safe area of Srebrenica a week ago. Outgunned and outnumbered and without the support of NATO airstrikes, 30,000 refugees were forced to cross over mountain ranges to seek shelter in Tuzla. An investigation by the International Red Cross and the UN into alleged war crimes by the Bosnian Serbs during the offensive suggests up to one and a half thousand people were brutally murdered. The Bosnian government army's defense of the Bihać enclave is becoming increasingly shaky with reports that they're running out of ammunition. The region has seen some of the heaviest fighting in the Bosnian conflict since last week's all-sided offensive by the Serbs on the northwestern pocket. The UN reports the Serbs are making steady gains on the region, with the area around Bihać itself a so-called UN safe zone. Bosnian Serbs are pushing from the south and east, hoping to link up with Krajina Serbs attacking from the west, while their rebel Muslim allies approach from the north. All quiet on the streets of Pale, or an attempt by the Bosnian Serbs to end speculation of an attack on their stronghold. These pictures, filmed on Monday by Serb television, run contrary to reports of a series of explosions just after midday in the town that set off sirens warning civilians to stay indoors. There's confusion over what took place. Both the Bosnian army deny any involvement in the shelling of the region, plus NATO state that none of their aircraft were in the area at the time. Meanwhile, France continues to deny a newspaper report that one of its jets dropped a bomb on Pale on Sunday. It's called a Predator, but it looks harmless enough. More like a model plane than a spy plane, this machine is one of the most sophisticated in the world. Stationed in Albania, the robot reconnaissance plane is bringing back extremely detailed images of Bosnian territory. The American plane has been telling NATO and the UN exactly what's happening on the ground in ex-Yugoslavia, with the help of three cameras on board, two for daytime and an infrared one for night flights. Flying at a height of 7,500 meters for a maximum of 40 hours, it's able to see where it's going thanks to a camera in its nose, controlled by remote control by the pilot, who remains firmly on the ground. 
The carnage after the suicide bombing of an Israeli bus early on Monday morning that killed six people. The Islamic fundamentalist group Hamas has claimed responsibility for the blast that ripped through the bus in a suburb of Tel Aviv, bringing Israeli PLO peace talks to a temporary standstill. Scuffles broke out at the site of the bombing as angry Israelis chanted death to Arabs and called for an end to talks that both sides have vowed to press ahead with peace negotiations. There's been international condemnation of such attempts to undermine peace efforts, but talks are expected to resume in two days at an unspecified venue outside of the Middle East, the time to hold the funerals of those killed. Meanwhile, Israeli security forces have completely sealed off the Palestinian areas of the Gaza Strip and the West Bank. Russian President Boris Yeltsin has been discharged from the Moscow hospital where he's been recovering from a minor heart attack for the past two weeks. Yeltsin, who's 64, has been transferred to a sanatorium west of Moscow where doctors have told him to rest. Officials won't say when the president will resume his duties at the Kremlin. However, in a security shakeup, the new head of the Federal Security Service, the successor to the old KGB, has been named as Colonel General Mikhail Barsakov. Barsakov is seen as a close ally of the president. His promotion to the top state